How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video and this video is going to be a very very special one because we are taking our first look at Max 9. You and me we're gonna look at this for the first time together and there's actually so many new features that I'm excited to talk about and take a look at. I'm gonna try to do my best to keep this video just as a brief overview of a lot of these new features and then as it goes on we'll get into deeper stuff in future videos. So let's just jump right into it shall we? I have on my other screen right now the Cycling74 website open up and I've just got a list of some of the cool new things that are in Max 9 update. First and foremost most we got a bunch of new jitter geometry stuff which is something I'm really excited about because a lot of the visual work I've done uses gl.mesh to do open geometry and use that to create cool audio reactive shapes so now there's even more potential for us for more shapes and I'm really really excited about that and all of these objects if you're curious we'll start with jit.geo m for geometry and there's dot shape text gen normal gen Ooh, normal gen, that's a really cool one I'm ready to dive into. Decimate, smooth, remesh, prop, wave, twist, normalize, dimples. There's a whole bunch of different options that we have at our disposal now. It's going to be really exciting. The other cool stuff that they have added, we have this new set of Ableton objects in Max MSP. So if you're familiar with Ableton, all their audio effects we can now use as max msp objects that alone is a big one in fact let's look at some of those to find those objects it's just the abl which stands for ableton and then we have let's see dsp flanger sure why not stereo flanger channel eq compressor delay drift echo limiter redux reverb all of these are the ableton audio effects and they're right here as objects that is absolutely amazing that we have this at our disposal to use now thank you so much ableton cycling 74 really appreciate that what else do we have we have the new jitter objects oh this is actually maybe one of the things i'm most excited about uh we have this new set of objects called jit.fx and you see it's a similar thing we have jit.fx rota jit.fx sly luma key alpha glue reflect grid wipe so a lot of old jitter effects and a lot of brand new jitter effects and what is really amazing about this jit.fx uh, that was the, you know, <laughs> first thing I wanted to try out is these effects work with textures, uh, which is really, really massive. If we actually just do some stuff, and you'll notice actually, as I've been typing in these objects, jit.world, and we give it its normal starting attributes that we would do for every video that requires a jit.world, you see it's now also color coded, which is really amazing it actually makes things so much cleaner and easier to look at we can see that jit.world is the name of the object and our attributes are blue you know so that just makes it really clear and we can see that the setting for the attribute is also orange that is so nice that they did that there's uh, a ton of other useful features like that that I want to talk about too. But first, back to jit.fx.rota because this, guys, this is revolutionary. The fact that we can use these jitter effects on textures, I am so excited about. We did not used to be able to do this. If you wanted to use a jitter effect on a texture, you would have to bounce it back down to being a matrix and you lose frame rate in the process. But this, this new ability to do these jitter.fx effects on textures lets us keep our super high frame rate for HD definition videos and images. It's so, so, so amazing that this is here. So let's finish just setting this up to really demo that. We're gonna do jit.gl video plane as we would always do to plop a video plane into our world. I'm gonna press T to create a toggle, patch that into jit.world, command click in the blank space to lock the patch. You can also click this icon, that's still the same. We're gonna click the toggle, turn it on to render, unlock our patch and then I'm just gonna drag and drop a video. They've still got a whole list of default videos that you can use. And I'm just gonna drag that into the jit.fx.rota. I'm gonna press A to create an adder UI, lock that in, lock the patch. And then you see there's an option here, output texture. We're just gonna check that texture so it is now outputting as a texture and you see this patch cord changed from green to blue, which means it will indeed output a texture. And if we lock the patch, click that so it loops, click the play button so it plays, and then send a message vol zero so it doesn't make any sound when I am talking. Uh, we see we are now outputting a texture to the video plane 
through this jit.fx rota object and it have these blue patch cores the entire way. So we know it is a texture thrown through and we're gonna unlock the patch again, press A, create another add UI, patch that into the jit.fx rota, lock, click it, find a parameter, let's do offset. And ooh, this is actually also a really nice thing about the jit.fx effects. Um, things like offset uh, are now combined into one attribute. So rather than like, you know, the old version jit.rota or offset X and offset Y are separate attributes, it's now one attribute and you send it the list of the two variables to access that. I think that's just, you know, cleaner, easier to understand. And I'm gonna move some of these values and okay, cool. So it seems like they also take normalized coordinates, which is slightly different from how jit.rota worked. You sent the pixel values, but the fact that it takes normalized coordinates is actually also an improvement because it's just easier dealing with normalized values. Anything between zero and one to get your full range is chef's kiss. So yeah, another new feature that they added is you can see down here, there's this number, it says FPS meter. This is showing us what our current frame rate is. And you see on average, it's about 100 to 120 frames per second, which is really, really good. That is high, high frame rate. And so it's just, yeah, honestly, I cannot stress enough, one, how neat that little feature is, but also just how nice it is that we can do these jitter effects on textures. That will actually open up so many possibilities. I, I can't even describe into words how excited I am about that. So that's awesome that that's there. Man, there's so many cool new things that I wanna talk about too. We have like new jitter UI objects to do UI interfaces with the window. I actually have no idea how these work yet, so I'm gonna look into that and make a video on it very soon for you guys. But these just add like buttons in our jitter window that you can click on to interact with the patch and so on. So you can act, you could build a really nice user interface window to interact with your patch. And that I think is amazing. The last feature that I really wanna point out in this video that I think is going to be super helpful, especially for you guys who are brand new to Max MSP, is this new debugging tool called Illustration Mode. I'm gonna set up a random example real quick. And this will, let's just do random three. Uh, we'll say cell zero, one, two, three, um, and patch all of these into some buttons, just super, super fast. And let's just create a Metro 100, give it a toggle, patch everything in and click it on. And you'll see these buttons are now lighting up depending on whatever the random number is coming out of that. Let's uh, slide a number box in there too, just so we can see the number that's coming out. And now I'm gonna click debug mode um, and we're gonna turn it to illustration mode. Yep, okay. This is what we wanna see. So you see it's showing us in illustration mode uh, the order of operations as they occur. So you can literally now see the, the signal flow data. You can see the bang come out of Metro, hit the random, see the ran, uh, random number pass through the patch cord into the number box, out through the number box, into the cell object, and then out the corresponding patch cord too. Uh, this is going to be a super, super useful feature for debugging your patches. I cannot express the number of times I ran into an issue where the code looked right, everything should have been working, but because of like a timing issue with the signal flow, the, the code didn't actually work. You know, something would happen before I wanted something else to happen and that would cause it to not work. And it looked like it should have been happening properly, but it just didn't. This, this debug uh, mode feature, illustration mode that we have now will show you the timing of the signal flow. So it'll make debugging issues like that, which are very common, very easy to do. And again, I cannot express how revolutionary this will be for Max programming. So it is super useful feature that we have in our possession now. And that is it. I'm gonna keep this video very, very brief. I just wanted to talk about some of these new features and show you guys them in action. We're going to get deeper into this stuff in future tutorial videos. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to sharing more about Max9 with you guys soon. Thanks for watching.